Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. This is another paid request, this time for Tomas. I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, thank you for that. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of video, review, commentary, re-review, whatever topic, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Now this is for the film Thief of Hearts from 1984, which I had never heard of. But this is the film that Stephen Bauer did after Starface, after he co-starred in that with Al Pacino. And this was produced by Don Simpson and Jerry Bruckheimer. And this is probably the most unknown film that these two guys did. Because you gotta think, Don Simpson and Jerry Bruckheimer, they're producing Flashdance, they're producing Beverly Hills Cop 1 and 2, they're producing Top Gun, even, you know, Days of Thunder, Bad Boys... A Crimson Tide, and then Thief of Hearts. Like, what? what is this? It's not an action film. It was probably one of the big mistakes of it. It's more of like a trashy romance novel, but it's not too trashy. It's Stephen Bauer as a cat burglar, and he works with David Caruso, who... Has like a punk red haircut and he's doing cocaine and kind of a fun performance with David Caruso. He definitely feels psycho ish in this. Um, and I like David Caruso. I don't, he might not be the nicest guy as I've heard, but uh, I liked him in CSI Miami. He's in First Blood with Sylvester Stallone, Session 9, which I really enjoy. I've always liked him as an actor. I even like the movie Jade, at least the. The director's cut that's only on VHS for some reason. I mean, when you put it on DVD, you might as well put both cuts on it, but that's just me. But it's Stephen Bauer is a cab burglar, but he's got a heart to him as well. He steals, he goes in this couple, their house, and the couple is Barbara Williams, and I recognize her. She's the mom in Watchers. She plays Corey Haim's mom in the first Watchers movie. So she's there, and then her husband's played by John Getz. He's the guy in the Fly remake. The guy who wants Gina Davis, that gets his hand melted off by Seth Brundle's The, the Fly's vomit. Melts the guy's hand. And then he has a small role in The Fly too. That's John Getz. John Getz is a children's author. But he's one of those guys that has too much on his work. Not enough time for his woman. And even when she tries to seduce him. He's like, no, no, no. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. You know, one of that stuff. So Barbara Williams is a bit worried. Because one of the things stolen is her diary. That had all these naughty thoughts in it. And Stephen Bauer... Reading this journal, getting to know her, all of her desires, all of her fantasies, all of her thoughts. Finds her, stalks her, seduces her, which succeeds. And a bit of a clunky love story happens. John gets, gets a bit paranoid. Then David Crusoe gets a bit in the mix of it. Now... I don't think Stephen Bauer is a bad actor. I don't think he's doing a bad job. I mean, at least with the script he's given, I think he's doing as well as he can. Barbara Will Barbara Williams seems a little bit... I don't want to say wooden, but... I would say she did a much better job in Watchers as Corey Haim's mom. I liked her and her character more in that than in this. And this, I don't know, something was off about it. I think what it was is that her and Stephen Bauer don't really have great chemistry with each other. Because it's an erotic thriller. I, I guess you, that'd be the best way to put it. And it's not too erotic. And, and it's actually kind of goofy. Which I'll get to certain scenes. And then I, you need really electric chemistry with the two leads. I don't think you have that with this. I don't. I mean, Stephen Bauer's not bad after all. I said, I think. He's doing the best he can. Barbara Williams, I've seen her be decent. 
Like, I was more interested in David Caruso's cocaine fueled villain character. Um, I don't know why you remind me a little bit of James Spader in this, which is a good thing. I mean, he's saying lines like, you know, she gives head like an iguana. <laughs> So it was interesting to, to see him in this. The big star of this film, the absolute best part of the movie, is the musical score. I would at least say, go on YouTube. If it's up, find the score to this movie and take a listen to it. Thief of Hearts soundtrack, or at least the score. The songs were there, but the score is really good. Because the score is done by Harold Faltermeyer. And there's even certain bits with Giorgio Moroder. Jojo Marauder did music for Starface. He helped did music on some of the songs and others. And but a good chunk of his Harold Faltermeyer. Imagine if Harold Faltermeyer wanted to do an impression of Tangerine Dream. Because if you remember a film called Thief with James Caan, pretty good movie. Much better than this when in terms of burglar, cat burglar, thief stuff. Thief is much better. But the score by Tangerine Dream is very solid. This is Harold Faltermeyer doing his interpretation of that. And that deserves a much better movie. And it's very nice to listen to. And I mean, Harold Faltermeyer did the score to Beverly Hills Cop. And uh, I think Fletch. Tangle and Cash. Great composer. And this is definitely... One that no one knows about, but it's very, like I said, number one A grade for the score. It's easily the best part of it. It it really helped. It shows how important a score is, because you may not be that interested in the visuals. And that's one thing Thief did better with Michael Mann's directions. The, the visuals are more striking. But man, the music will really help you keep going. <laughs> It's just like the dialogue, like Barbara Williams gets another diary and he's, she's writing, I know he's reading the journals, I can feel him turning the pages. There's a scene after Stephen Bauer introduces himself and... I bet you guess your favorite ice cream. How do you know? You drop this. Because they're at a grocery store. And then Barbara tries to seduce her man with ice cream. And then he's like, nah, nah, get away. And so Stephen Bauer approaches her more and more. Hey, you're an interior decorator. I want to hire you. Here's the money for it. They get on a boat. And he's oiling himself up. And she's staring like she's ready to explode and <laughs> in her pants and he's like rubbing his, the oil on his body and I'm like oh, Jesus. and then it's a trashy romance novel but again it's not that that um, as much trash in terms of exploitive or scandalous Not even a whole lot of nudity. There is a love scene where you see a little bit of nudity. But it's not as blatant as you would think with this kind of plot. But the scene I'm thinking of is... Stephen Bauer teaches her how to shoot a gun. And by teaching her how to shoot a gun... He starts dying her hand and then starts feeling her up right here. Like rubbing her bazoongas... Like he's ready to mash some marshmallows, and then you know, does he? This you know, duh. and there's more. I mean, this is in the this is like a gun range. I've never seen a gun range seduction. I this is the first. <laughs> She's aiming the gun, and he's doing this, and then she falls for him, and then they have you know the love scene, and I'm like. This came off much funnier than it was intended. I don't know why it made me laugh, but it did. And 
And the movie just comes off as kind of dull. I mean, it's not rant because it's not pulling my hair out. Well, I don't have hair. I shave it. So it doesn't pull my beard out. And be, oh, I'm so it's just, yeah. I'm kind of like curious as to where this is going. Not minding Stephen Bowers an actor. Having fun with Dave Caruso's craze performance. I wish the movie was more about him. This is even the bit that he's doing. This is before Aliens. You know, remember Bishop did the knife thing to Hudson to Bill Paxton? Well, this is 84, so it's before Aliens. And Dave Caruso's doing that. Now, of course, I know stuff that was done before Aliens, but anytime I think of that, I always think of Aliens. And this is another reminder that no, Aliens did not do that first. It's just, I think, probably the movie that did it the most popular. But yeah, David Russo's doing that knife hand, you know, dad thing. And like, George Went is in the film, in like a nothing part. He plays John Detz's buddy. He's in it for like three three scenes pretty much saying how John Getz is a dick and you should pay more attention to your wife and it's cool to see George Went. he was on the TV show Cheers he had a fun part in the film House with William Cat, which is a horror comedy he's been in a few other films but he's mainly known for Norm on the TV show Cheers but it's kind of weird. It's like, oh, there's George Wendt, but he has like, you know, three scenes. Ah, it's one of those that it's kind of hard to like anybody because, you know, Stephen Bauer is a cab burglar. You know, Barbara Williams is, is cheating on his hus her husband. And then John Getz is just very dismissive of his wife. So, uh, and then David Caruso is a crazy psycho snoring cocaine. So it's like, well, I... I guess Stephen Bauer because he's a cap burglar with a little bit of a heart of gold even though he's seducing a woman to cheat on her husband so that gold heart must be a bit tarnished so I good score though good score moody at times atmospheric at times I just spoil the ending because sometimes I do that in case people don't want to watch the film, but they want to know how it ends. So, spoilers. John Getz follows Stephen Bauer, finds the warehouse where him and David Cruz have stolen items, including some of their own items. John Getz's items. He goes back to warn Barbara Williams. Stephen Bauer pretty much goes, choose him or me. She chooses her husband. Stephen Bauer's a bit brokenhearted. But then goes back to the couple's house and realizes David Crusoe's in there. And Crusoe's like, what happened to you? They have a bit of a tense standoff. Because, again, Crusoe, he knows how to play sleazy, psycho. Like, he knows how to do that. Like I said, I think he was the best actor in the movie. Definitely the most interesting performance in the movie. Like I said, I wish there was more of him. They did in a bit of a fight. Caruso stabs a bit of Stephen Bauer. The couple comes home. Barbara Williams has the gun that Bauer trained her in. There's a masked figure. A gunshot's heard. Body falls down the stairs and it's David Caruso. Cops get there. Actually, the, the lead cop, I remember, he's also the cop going after Richard Pryor and Gene Wilder and see no evil, hear no evil. He's the guy at the end of that film that goes, I want to shoot them. Why can't I shoot them? It, that cop, he plays a cop in this movie as well. I forget the actor's name, but I might remember him. But yeah, Barbara Williams goes upstairs, and there's Stephen Bauer. He's wounded, and she realizes, you shot him. You saved my life. And Stephen Bauer didn't, doesn't say anything, because yeah, he did, because he still cares for her cared for her safety she kind of appreciates that he jumps off gets away she doesn't tell the cops she's looked out the window as if she misses him or you know tears up movie ends
and with a song called Thief of Hearts. And I think that song has a bit of the music by Giorgio Moroder, who didn't, did the store for Starface. And then, yeah, Harold Faltermeyer did the most of the other store, and I keep harping on because it is the best thing of the movie. Like, the store outweighed the stripped. I think, I mean, the Lees didn't have the best chemistry. Uh, for Dom Simpson, Jared Brightheimer, do you think you have much more action or much more punch? There's much more of a slower movie, and there's really not much of any action. Uh, the director, uh, I really don't know what else he's done or if he's gone on to do anything else. I mean, I guess it depends how you feel about erotic thrillers. I mean, erotic thriller. I mean, they're not really the genre I watch much. Because it's like, if I want a thriller, I just want a hardcore thriller. If I want erotic, there's, you know, X videos and you know, all sorts of sites for that. So, it's like, well, yeah. But it was cool to hear this music. It was cool to see David Caruso in a pretty early role. I mean, this is after First Blood, but before NYPD Blue and, and CSI Miami and such. Stephen Bauer, again, he was good in Starface. Nice that he got a leading role, but sadly this film did nothing at the box office. I, I don't even know if this film's on DVD. <laughs> uh, maybe it is. But like I say, it was cool to see David Caruso playing a cocaine, stiffen, looking like a punk rocker. Or at least a little bit that going that way. And I, to say one last time, I at least urge people to look up the store on YouTube. And I think you'll get some enjoyment out of that. Because it's definitely Harold Fultemeyer doing his version of Tangerine Dream. And it's a pretty damn good store. Like I say, I, I wish it was in a better movie. But... So I got some enjoyment out of it, unintentionally or intentionally, but uh, it's definitely the weakest Don Simpson, Jared Bruckheimer film they produced. Because all those films I mentioned, I mean, Top Gun, Days of Thunder, Burials Top 1 and 2, Bad Boys, Crimson Tide, even Flashdance, they are better than this. So, take that for you, Will. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later.